Hi there, welcome to Chem Camp. I'm Mrs. Newman, and I'm back with another AP Chem multiple choice question to help students prepare for their May exam. Once again, I've got a multiple choice question involving intermolecular forces. The reason being this particular topic appears quite frequently on the multiple choice section of the exam. So it's a really good topic to have a complete understanding of. So let's learn a little chemistry. The problem reads, based on the data in the table above, which of the following liquid substances has the weakest intermolecular forces? So we're going to focus in on the weakest inters. Keeping in mind that an intermolecular force is the attraction between two different molecules in a sample of matter. Now if they're the weakest, then they're going to be very easily broken. And there's a few different pieces of lab data that indicate weak enters. So let's review them. The first set is actually going to be a low boiling point or a low melting point. The reason being, as a substance trans, excuse me, transitions from the solid state to the liquid state, or the liquid state to the gaseous state, you actually have to break those intermolecular forces or the attractions between those molecules. Well, if they're easily broken, then it's not gonna require much energy, which results in a low boiling point and a low melting point. The third piece of lab data that you could take a look at to determine something about the strength of intermolecular forces is going to be vapor pressure. However, it's a little bit different. You see, at the surface of any liquid, those molecules at the surface actually are able to ex escape the liquid state and enter the gaseous state. It's called evaporation. Now, those molecules that enter the gaseous state actually exert a little bit of pressure down on the surface of that liquid. And the more of those molecules that are able to escape to the gaseous state, the more pressure that is exerted down and the higher the vapor pressure. Well, if you have a substance that has real weak intermolecular forces, then more and more of those molecules are gonna be able to escape to that gaseous state and continue to increase that vapor pressure. So another good indicator of weak enters is a high vapor pressure. Now, if we take a look at our data table, they give us four different substances, and they all happen to be organic molecules, meaning they've got carbon atoms bonded to either hydrogens or oxygens. And they give us vapor pressure. So like we just said then, we're gonna be looking at our list of data, and we're gonna pull out the molecule that has the highest vapor pressure. So if I take a look at this list, I like the CH3OH, or letter C, which is going to be our answer. Now this type of question usually throws students for a loop because they want the C6H6, or the nonpolar molecule, to be the answer, but it's not, okay? And the College Board is going to rely on this because look what their very first choice is. In letter A, they give you the C6H6, which is benzene and is a nonpolar molecule. Anytime you've got just carbons and hydrogens bonded to each other, it's a real good indicator that it's a very symmetric molecule resulting in a nonpolar. And nonpolar molecules usually experience the weakest type of intermolecular forces, your London dispersions. So the College Board wants you to see that C6H6, pick that one right away, and move on with the rest of your test. However, that's gonna cost you a point. You have to rely on the data here. You see, the CH3OH, 
which has an oxygen and a hydrogen bonded within the molecule, is going to experience hydrogen bonding, bonding, which should be a stronger inter than your London dispersions. However, with your organic molecules, you got to be very careful. The longer the carbon chain becomes, in this case it's a cyclic carbon chain in benzene, C6H6, the larger the molecule is. And the larger your nonpolar molecules, the more polarizable they're going to be, and the stronger the London dispersion forces are going to be. In this case, it actually winds up in a lower vapor pressure of just 75 torr compared to your methanol, the CH3OH, that experiences those hydrogen bonds. So anytime the College Board gives you a data table, be sure you look at that data very carefully. I hope this helps you study for the AP Chem exam. Continue to follow along for more AP Chem content.